Hey guys, this is Isabel from Cognito Forms, and today I'm excited to introduce a new upgrade to workflow automation, workflow tasks. If you're familiar with workflow, you know it's built around three key elements, actions, statuses, and roles. These elements work together to ensure the right people are informed at the right time. With workflow tasks, we're taking it a step further. In addition to email notifications, the new task menu offers a clear summary of tasks, making it easier to manage your workload and ensure that nothing is ever overlooked. To demonstrate how this feature works, I'm using our employment application template as an example. This form has four different pages with each page dedicated to a different stage of the hiring process. The first page is the only page the applicant would see. It's where they'd add their personal information and qualifications. Once submitted, human resources would access the second page to schedule an interview. The third page is for the interviewer to rate the candidate, and the fourth page is where HR records their decision to hire or decline the candidate. After selecting this pre-made template, I did change a few things. For example, on the first page, I changed a text box field to a lookup field so candidates can easily select the position they're applying for. The lookup field is connected to another form listing all the open roles and their respective hiring managers. This setup simplifies things for human resources as well. On the second page, I've added a person field for the person in human resources who's responsible for screening all the incoming applications. It's linked to an employee list and automatically defaults to whoever holds the recruiting manager title. This allows for continuity in case a different person takes on this role in the future. I've done something similar for the interviewer by using a text box field to default to the hiring manager of the chosen role. So when a candidate selects the position they're applying for, the form automatically assigns the correct hiring manager as the interviewer. These are just a few examples of how you can use different kinds of fields to make your forms more automated. The first step to setting up tasks is to ensure the workflow is configured properly. Since we're using a template, all of the actions, statuses, and roles are mostly defined, and all I have to do is assign the roles. In this case, we have three roles, the applicant, human resources, and an interviewer. The applicant is set to the public role, which means that they'll start the workflow sequence by submitting an entry to the form. The human resources role is the internal role, which means this person will be the one receiving the entry. By default, entries will be shared to anyone sent a human resources link. You'll see that I've already added this human resources person field, which was available in the drop-down menu below. The interviewer is set as an other type role, which means that this person is involved with the workflow, but they'll only see what I allow them to see and perform only certain actions. Similar to how I structured the human resources role, I shared entries with position.hiringmanager.email. At this point, you could go to your email notifications and route them to specific email addresses. However, that step is completely optional after setting up the roles this way. While it's still a good idea to use email notifications since it isn't required for tasks to work, I'm going to skip it to save time. Now that we have our workflow adequately set up, the next thing we need to do is set up entry views for each member of the workflow process. To do that, we'll head over to the Entries page. By default, every form gets an All Entries view. This is automatically set to the internal role, which in this case is Human Resources. So when HR logs in, she'll see all the applications, regardless of their status, and she can get a sense of the overall state of things. So now we need to create a view for entries we want to assign as tasks. The first task is for Human Resources to review the newly submitted employment applications. So we want to create a view for applications with a submitted status. When you open the drop-down menu at the top, you'll see options to add a grid view or add a form view. A grid view is a view of the entries, and a form view is a view of the form. In this case, we'll want to add a new grid view. I'll label it New Applications and keep the role set to Human Resources. Below that, there are some options about whether we're going to allow new entries. Now, even though Human Resources will be adding to the form, they won't actually create a new entry. Creating a new entry would represent creating a new candidate, so I'm going to toggle this off. However, I do need to turn on the Shared With Me option. This is important for our workflow, most especially because it allows us to assign these entries as tasks, but also because tasks should be relevant to the person they're assigned to. So once I turn tasks on, Human Resources will see an alert on the dashboard for every new application that comes in. For example, if there are 10 newly submitted applications to review, they'll see that in a summary on their dashboard. 
It's important to note that because I assign these entries as tasks for another team member, I will not be able to see any entries in this particular view. Even though I'm the owner of the organization, if I want to see all the entries with the submitted status, I would either need to create a new view for myself, or I could filter by status in my all entries view. One last thing to consider before we're finished creating this view for human resources. If we click on the filter option, we'll notice that this view is seeing all the entries. Since we only want to see entries with the status set to submitted, I'm going to set the filter accordingly, then hit apply. Once I've done that, I must also remember to hit this save button. You definitely don't want to miss this step because that's how we'll save the filter to this view. If I don't hit save and then I refresh this screen or come back to it later, you'll notice that the filter reset to the default option, which means that human resources would see more tasks than they actually need to complete, and we don't want that. So now I'll go back into the filter, set it to show only entries with the submitted status, and save it to this view. That way, when human resources either declines the application or schedules an interview, their task is complete and it'll disappear from this view. One more thing I could do before creating another view is to remove some of these columns. I really only need to see status, the date it was submitted, the name of the applicant, the position they're applying for, the date and time of the interview, and the interviewer's name. Then I'll space out my columns so I can see everything I want to see, and once I'm finished, I'll save my view. The next task is for the interviewer to give feedback on the applicant following the interview. So just like before, I'll add a new grid view, label it Pending Review from Interviewer, and set the role to Interviewer. I don't want the interviewer to create new entries, but I will turn on Shared With Me and assign as tasks. I'll save that, and then I'll go into the filter to show only entries with the status of Interview Scheduled. Once we set our filter and move the columns the way we want, we can move on to the next step of our process. At this point, the interviewer has provided feedback on the applicant and has changed the status of the entry to interview completed. So now it's up to human resources to make a final determination about whether to extend an offer or not. Let's quickly create a view for that. I'll add a new grid view, label it pending final decision from HR, set the role to human resources, turn off allow new entries, and turn on Shared With Me and Assign As Tasks. Then I'll set the filter to show only entries with the status interview completed, adjust the columns, and save our view. Now we only need one more view to complete the process. If Human Resources decides to extend an offer, we'll need a view of the applications that are awaiting the applicant's response. This grid view I'll label Pending Decision From Applicant, set the role to Human Resources, turn off Allow New Entries, turn on Shared With Me, and turn on Assign As Tasks. Then I'll set the filter to show only entries with the status of Offer Extended, and I'll save that to this view. Now you'll notice that I did not set up a view for the applicant. This is because they will not be logging into Cognito Forms to submit their entry. They'll simply open up the public link, fill out the form, or save and resume their work before submitting their final entry. However, if your workflow involves a member of your organization that does log into Cognito Forms, you may want to set up a public form view. You might do this if you have a member of your organization that starts the workflow process by filling out a timesheet form or an expense report. In that case, you would add a new form view, give it a title, and assign it to the public role. So when your team member signs into their Cognito Forms account, their view will look like this. Here you can see all the different views I've created for this employee's timesheet. While most of these views aren't assigned to the employee's tasks, it enables them to track the progress of their timesheets throughout the approval process. But getting back to our employment application, I've got these five views, and just for the sake of organization, I'll reorder them chronologically. All entries I'll keep at the top, then new applications, pending review from interviewer, pending final decision from HR, and finally pending decision from applicant. Now that we're finished setting up our user-specific views and assigning them as tasks, let's see this workflow in action. First, I'll start the workflow process by accessing the public link, and I'll go ahead and submit two different employment applications for the financial analyst position. Once the applications are submitted, it's time for human resources to review them. The first thing you'll notice is that there are two task alerts on my dashboard, and we can see exactly which form those two tasks are attached to. When I click on the tasks, it takes me right to the entries in the new applications view we created earlier. 
After reviewing both the applicant's credentials, I've decided to decline the first application, but I'm interested in interviewing the second candidate, so I'll schedule the interview. One thing I want to point out here is that the correct hiring manager was automatically assigned as the interviewer based on the position the applicant chose, helping to keep this process error-free. Once I'm finished adding my notes, I'll click the Schedule Interview button. Then the interviewer will log in and see that they have a pending task. Once the interviewer submits his feedback, HR will either decline the application or extend an offer. I'm going to go ahead and extend an offer. Now the task disappears from this view and moves into the pending decision from applicant view, where it'll remain until human resources receives an answer, ending our workflow process. Although this was a fairly simple example, workflow tasks is especially useful for streamlining complex workflows. By relying on tasks, you can keep your workflow efficient and error-free and never worry about missing an important email notification again. If you'd like to learn more about workflow tasks, you can check out our user guides at cognitoforms.com support, or feel free to reach out to us directly by submitting a support request.